Hello, my name is Matt McFarland. I'm delighted to be here today and take a few minutes to share with you specifically about uh, well, some aspects of Nationwide Children's Hospital and our research institute, but specifically talk to you about our Center for Gene Therapy and really focus in probably less on the content of what we, re what we research in that center and where we work in discovery, but really more towards the infrastructure that we think has been really instrumental in helping us make sure that the innovations that occur within our academic center have the best chance of impacting patients. And so the first slide that, uh, that I have up here today is just a generic slide from our strategic plan talking about how we as a hospital system want to lead the journey to best outcomes for patients. And there's a lot of elements that we've put together in our strategic plan around how we do that. But one piece of this that I want to highlight in particular is at the center bottom of the slide where you see partnerships is highlighted. And I'm going to bring this whole talk back to that at the end where part of what we are really going to be focused on in the course of the next several years is taking the infrastructure that we've built and figuring out how to partner it to have a greater impact on, on pediatric health. So as I said today, I'm going to be focusing on the Center for Gene Therapy, but I want to start off real quickly with a slide that just, I'm not going to go through all of these, but the different research centers that exist at the Research Institute and, and the way we think about research in a translational way. For each of our centers, we have these categories of discovery, translation, um, clinical trials, clinical outcomes, and population health. And we take each of our centers and we think through where we're able to check the box and say we're effectively delivering on these fronts. And it's without hesitation that I can highlight our Center for Gene Therapy as kind of the, the flagship center within our institution where we first started implementing these principles well over a decade ago. And we've probably seen some of, some of the best results on that front. And so when we think about that translation, um, I, before I can kind of talk about how we've done that, I do want to quickly give you a, an overview of our Center for Gene Therapy. Um, we primarily specialize in treatment of single gene disorders. We concentrate on neuromuscular and neurologic diseases. Um, we have a center that's grown in bench strength, strength excuse me, to include close to 15 investigators with more being onboarded every day as we actively recruit. Um, Dr. Kevin Flanagan's our center director and um, you know, has, has taken over leadership from the previous director, Dr. Jerry Mandel, and we've been really blessed to have the leadership in this center that we've had. I highlight at the bottom of this screen, we do have a very active center when it comes to idea generation and innovation. There's just some metrics around patents that have been filed over the last few years. And once again, I list their names here. I I would encourage you, if you have any questions about what we do technically and getting connected with one of these faculty, please talk to me. I can get you connected and I can get questions answered. But to summarize, our Center for Gene Therapy really uh, uses the approaches of gene replacement, surrogate gene delivery, vectorized, ex vectorized exon skipping, and gene editing. And this is all great, and like I said, there's a lot of talk we could do around that science, but the reality is, as an institution, one of the things that we recognize very early on is that strong scientific work alone is not enough to ensure that the translation of the innovation happens to the patient. And this is the proverbial valley of death we all talk about. So one of the things we started asking ourselves several years ago is what can we do as an institution to give our innovations the best chance to be realized? And for us, that quickly became well, we can de-risk them. We, we can write business plans. We can do market analysis. That doesn't really have the impact with the stakeholders we're trying to eventually hand these things off to. What does is can we de-risk a technology? Can we move it to the clinic? So this statement intentionally says what do we do to get a technology to the clinic? And then when we get it there, will that enable a partnership? And so there's a few different ways that we do that. Uh, the first way is through uh, funds that we've made available internally. So we recognize there's a gap in funding uh, between traditionally kind of research discovery work that federal dollars cover, so on and so forth, and then work that's developed enough to bring in dilutive capital or, or capital from a, from a partnering company. Recognizing that gap, we internally have built a gap funding mechanism for pre-licensed technologies where we can deploy up to $100,000 um, for a project that has articulated a really strong value inflection point that's going to allow that technology to ad advance to that next stage of engagement. And so that's one thing we've, we've advanced. Another thing, and I'll just do a quick plug for the, the state that I live in that I'm very proud to be a part of, and, you know, Nationwide Children's is in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, the Ohio Third Frontier launched a program in 2017 matching these gap funding dollars, dollar for dollar, when we know the technology is targeted to be an Ohio company company and take up a presence in Ohio. But if you haven't looked at Ohio and you're looking for CDMO needs or just to build your startup company in gene and cell therapy, I strongly encourage you to take a look. We have a strong contingent here today. And just to show you the way we've advanced our, our 
kind of investment on this front. Last year, we invested over half a million dollars in these kind of early stage pre-license concept grants, and this year we're on target to, to break well past that. But beyond the funding, what other things have we put in place that I think are just as probably more important, and that's in the way of infrastructure. So one of the things we recognize very on, early on at NCH is to get these things to clinic, we needed to be able to make them and have access to clinical grade product that we could use in our preclinical studies and then move that into the clinical studies that we, we conduct at NCH. We built a GMP capability that um, we, we utilized internally for several years back in 2020. We spun that capability out as Andalin Biosciences, which is now a partner institution for us, and still make sure that each of our faculty at NCH that are working in this space that Andalin can support them as a CDMO has access to this product early and often as they need it. We have a gene therapy operations team that I'll talk a little bit more about here in, in a few minutes, but basically I'm, I'm gonna go through with you kind of the background infrastructure that exists of different skill sets of professionals that are supporting the entire preclinical and clinical process at NCH for gene therapy. And also a, a really valuable asset we have is an Office of Research and Regulatory Affairs. And so uh, to be clear what I mean by this resource, this is not one or two people we have in-house that know a little bit about regulatory and when a faculty comes to them, they can say, ah, oh, you know what, you should, you should look here. Or you, you know, maybe this is the pathway for you, let's look into it, maybe talk to a consultant. What, what we have on staff are uh, regulatory professionals that I would put head to head with, with any team in, in an existing body biotech that's here at this conference. They work with our faculty from proof of concept stage through the early working out of when do we have the pre-IND meeting. We, you know, having it, we write the IND, we write for our own orphan designations, things like that. We have a team that can really produce on that front and strategize on that front. We found a lot of our partners ultimately end up continuing to work with our regulatory team even post license because there is such an effective cadence that we've developed with the FDA. And we have a clinical research services group at NCH that's actually um, been able to make sure, you know, these, these therapies are complex in nature. It's not trivial to administer these things clinically, as everybody here knows. And so um, I'll, I'll show this on a later slide as well. We have a, a clinical research services group that is very robust and dedicated to gene therapy and making sure that our patients have the comprehensive necessary experience when they're either going through a trial or receiving a therapy at our hospital system. And so putting a lot of these kind of early stage infrastructure pieces into place, you know, how has it worked for us? And so we've been able to achieve some level of success with this. Um, right now, of the eight approved gene therapies on the market, two of them came from Nationwide Children's Hospital, uh, Zolgemsma and Elevidus. Uh, Zolgemsma, just to briefly touch on it, was from a, a research insight that Dr. Brian Kaspar had back in 2008, uh, recognizing one of the AAV modalities as able to cross the blood-brain barrier over the next several years. He identified the right indication and the right um, you know, disease state this could target for him. That was spinal muscular atrophy. Um, Dr. Jerry Mundell was the clinical partner in this that really did some of the pioneering work in how to put together a clinical trial and a clinical study for this drug. And, and together, they worked with our partners originally at Avexis and eventually at Novartis to bring forward Zolgemsma, which is a, a therapy for SMA. It's a disease that has a 50% mortality rate at age one and a 100% mortality rate at age two. So the, the patient you see there on the screen is Evelyn. It, you know, every time I see Evelyn now riding a bike or jumping rope, it's, it's pretty moving to know that the impact this therapy had on her. More recently out of NCH, um, we were able to push forward with our partner, Sarepta Therapeutics, the product Elevidus, which is uh, utilizing microdystrophin gene replacement. Microdystrophin's a truncated version of full-length dystrophin. Um, it's been shown to have a really nice clinical impact on DMD patients. Um, this was born out of work done with Dr. Jerry Mandel again, this time not only only leading on the clinical front, but also as, as part of the bench science, bringing these innovations forward at NCH. And um, also I have highlighted up here Dr. Scott Harper, who's a member of our Center for Gene Therapy. We're really lucky to have him be on, on our bench strength. Um, he wasn't directly involved with this project at NCH, but it's actually his, his uh, research as a trainee at University of Michigan, where um, he did some of the seminal work characterizing microdystrophin as a potentially viable strategy for, for DMD. And then just to take it a step further, you know, those are the two products we've had approved, but we do have a robust pipeline of products right now that are, are pushing through NCH and our clinical trial infrastructure. Um, you can see up here we have a number of products that have advanced to phase one, two, a couple in phase three. Um, many of these are licensed. You can see on the right side of our 
yeah, right side of the screen, um, a number of partners we work with. So these are our strategic clinical partners that um, have become a licensee of ours and, and work back and forth with us on different products. And some of them have become, you know, multiple program partners, Sarepta Therapeutics probably being one of the best examples of that. Um, so we're, we're excited about the pipeline and, and what we're pushing through. And on the back end of that, what we've um, decided to do is to continue to invest in this infrastructure and to continue to invest in the areas where we were seeing results. So to highlight some of those quickly, you know, with new faculty recruitment, we've committed to hiring 50 new faculty at NCH by the year 2026. At least 25% to a third of those are going to be in the Center for Gene Therapy. Um, we have continued integration with Andalin Biosciences to have access to clinical grade vectors, specialized resources. We talked about regulatory affairs, but actually pharmacy services has become a huge resource for us in the hospital system and understanding navigating this process. Um, we have center ride research, research resources, training programs we've implemented. Um, the next slide, I'm going to show you the org chart for our, our administrative group uh, supporting the Center for Gene Therapy. And then I'm finally going to talk about um, a new program that we're launching at NCH, which is the, the primary thing I wanted to kind of put on your radar today. But um, another point I would make quickly to those in the room who are, who are kind of interested in the observation that when you build an infrastructure like this and you start to really put in place the pieces that are necessary to do this full bench to bedside translation and produce a work product that your partners can consume, you actually have multiple opportunities for innovation and if as an institution, a research institution, you're trying to monetize some of the work you do, op multiple opportunities for licensing. Um, we've had several instances where our training modules, our pharmacy manual, and the protocols that we put together for administration of gene therapy at the hospital setting have been outlicensed by other companies who, who want to, you know, just benefit from the work that's been done, not have to recreate the wheel. Um, we have a lot, as an example, the microscopic imaging lab, we have protocols and kind of research protocols that we've, we've developed a, a, a decent pipeline of outlicensing for, and, and we're pretty, pretty excited about that. Um, this is something I'm not going to go through in its entirety, but I've a couple times mentioned now how the Gene and Cell Therapy Center, um, or the Gene Therapy Center within NCH, houses this back office of support and, and infrastructure. And this is our org, org chart just for the center. Notice we have more employees supporting the work of these faculty than we do faculty in the center, because that's how complex this whole process can be. But our major goal with this is really to be able to produce a work product on the other side of our clinical trial work that our industry partner can look at and say, absolutely, this is great. I can take this to the agency. Heck, you've done this in collaboration with the agency. And so everything from program coordinators to, you know, clinical research coordinators, project managers, and, and the whole kit and caboodle with patient access, patient talking, social work, all of that, we've got that covered in our, in our process. And so this brings me to my final point I really wanted to talk about, which is a new effort for NCH that we're pushing forward in 2023, and that is we are launching a clinical um, gene and therapy center of excellence. So this clinical gene therapy center of excellence is really capitalizing on our observation that we think over the next 10 years, it's likely that a thousand plus, and that's probably a low estimate, patients will be dosed at Nationwide Children's with a gene therapy, um, you know, both in clinical trials that are being done there, but also just administration of approved product because we've built the infrastructure that can do that. And we want to expand that concept and actually, in line with our strategic partnership, be able to make our infrastructure available to industry partners, make them available to development partners where, you know, it's less about inside out innovation for us at that point and more outside in where we can actually just see our infrastructure have the biggest impact on kids. We think that's ultimately going to give us an impact um, or an opportunity to have impact on ultra rare disease, be an institution that's ready and capable to respond to these kind of one-off opportunities to, to treat patients who have a really specific instance, uh, instance of, of need. And just showing here quickly, I'm, I'm running out of time, so I want to make sure I finish up. Um, you know, what I want to highlight here is what this really represents is taking an infrastructure that we've piloted for 15 years within our research institute and expanding it out into the hospital system as a whole, benefiting from their concierge intake, their, you know, prior authorization expertise, all of the different functionalities that bring patients into our institution and give them the complete experience as a patient. We think we can service that to the standards 
that, that we hold ourselves to in gene and cell therapy, and, and we're looking to do that in, in Ohio and at Nationwide Children's Hospital. And I think this gives us an opportunity to really solidify Nationwide Children's Hospital identity as a, as a gene therapy destination for both partners and for patients. Um, we want to become the home, uh, the place that people think of to come and do their trials and do this work. I think it's an important function that allows us the opportunity to have, you know, greater access provided to patients. And at the end of the day, the take home is this, you know, we've integrated patient, and re patient care and research. We truly want to drive bench to bedside research. We are the leading institution or academic center for investigator initiated gene therapy studies in the country. And at the end of the day, we're seeking commercial partnership. We're seeking partners that want to work with us. If you're interested, please contact us and we'll see how we can find a way to work together. Thank you.